fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Come Silver. Hooray! The westbound stage creaked and swayed along the trail a few miles outside of the little town of Benton. Inside the coach, Dan Reed, 14-year-old nephew of the Lone Ranger, sat staring out at the wild, familiar country he loved so well. Finally, the only other occupant of the coach, a pleasant-looking man, turned to Dan and spoke. You're mighty quiet there, youngster. Rather young to be traveling alone through this country. I live out here, sir. I'm used to going about alone. Well, that is on fairly short trips. I notice you got on at the last town. Going very far? Oh, no, just as far as Benton. I went over to Pine Rock yesterday to see a friend. I see. What's your name, son? My name's Dan Reed. I have friends waiting for me in Benton. I'm going on through to Pecos myself. Oh? You don't talk like a Westerner, sir. I'm not. I'm from the East. Going out to visit an uncle of mine who owns a ranch there. He... What are you staring at, Dan? That ring you have on, sir, I... I didn't mean to stare, but... Oh, that's all right. Lots of people notice that ring. It's quite unusual. Here, look at it closely, if you like. Thank you. Golly, that's a beauty. But that design is the family crest, Dan. Gee, looks like a rearing stallion on each side and a hand holding a torch in the center. (laughs) Those look like horses, Dan. They're, They're supposed to be unicorns. Sort of a horse with a single horn. Oh, yes, I've read about them. It looks like there's printing along the bottom edge. You have good eyesight to see that. Yeah. It's the family oh. motto in Latin. Ser wabo fidem. Ser wabo fidem. Yes, I can make up the letters. Uh, what does that mean, sir? It means, I will keep faith. That's a good motto to live by, Dan. Mighty good. I'll remember it. Here's your ring back. This ring has been handed down from father to son through the family. I always wear it because I... What's going on? Golly, it's a holdup. Oh, hold on! Oh, hold on! Hold on! Who are you? Go down that express sack and be quick about it. It is a holdup. Golly, there's three of them and they're all masked. There's the sack, mister. Have nothing else of value. Not a thing. How many in the coach? Two of them. Man and boy. Tell me, get out, girl. Right, boy. I'll get them out. Get up there. All right, you in there. Both of you get out with your hands raised. Come on, get moving. Come on, son. Don't be frightened. I'm not frightened. I haven't anything to lose. Lean coming, Curly. 
I don't have a gun, mister, so you need... Shut up, I'll do the talking. Ah, he's a tenderfoot, Paul. Look at them clothes. Never mind that. All right, you give me your money. <laughs> Here's all I have. And that watch and chain. Well, I have to. Here. Yeah. And yeah, that'll bring something. And I'll take that stick pin, too. You don't miss anything, do you? Keep your mouth shut. Shut up. I don't shut him up, Paul. Hey, look. When he put his hand up to his mouth, I seen a gold ring, Paul. No. No, you can't take that. You better give in to them, sir. They're dangerous outlaws. Give me that ring or I'll shoot it off your hand. I guess there's nothing else to do. Here. I'll try it on for size. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad at all. I'll see here, mister. I don't mind being robbed of everything else, but that ring, it means a great deal I to me. I told and you I... to shut up. Just <laughs> stop. <laughs> That'll teach him. If certain friends of mine were here, you wouldn't get away with that, I'll bet. Say, the buttons got spunk, boy. I don't like fresh kids. Get back in the stage, you, before I bat you down. Well, go ahead, kid, and consider yourself lucky. I'm going to help the man up first. <laughs> He's got the mark of his own ring right on the side of his jaw. <laughs> Well, let's go, boys. You all right, sir? I'm all right now, Dan. But here, outlaws like that are usually killers. I guess we're lucky. Someday they'll, they'll get what's coming to them. Better get back inside there so that we can go on. We tell the sheriff and Benton what happened. Don't reckon it'll be much use. Ain't the first time I've been held up. Get in. Let's get going. Come on. Might as well. You're a brave lad, Daniel. Your warnings kept me from losing my head and perhaps getting a bullet instead of a blow. I've heard a friend of mine say, hot words are no match for hot lead, sir. Your friend is very wise. If I ever get that ring back, I'm going to send it to you. Golly, I'd sure like to have it. And I'll always remember that motto. Sir Wabo Feedem. I will keep faith. That's it, all right. Hey, back there. You all set to go? Yes. Get started, driver. Get up. Get up there. Get up there. When the stage arrived at Benton... The sheriff was notified of the holdup, and he set out with a posse to scour the territory for the outlaws. Meantime, Dan was met by Tonto, Indian companion of the Lone Ranger. And before long, the boy and the Indian reined up at the Lone Ranger's camp in the nearby hills. Oh, Scott, hold oh, wait, sir, hold, 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 hold. Well, Dan, have a nice trip. Oh, yes, sir. The stage got held up on the way back. The stage held up? That right, Tim Hubby. Driver tell Sheriff and Benton. Posse out hunting outlaws now. Tell me about it, Dan. Well, there were three men. One, the leader, was big and tough. He was called Bull. One of the others, a dark, curly-haired man, was called Curly. The third one just sat a little distance away and kept us covered with his gun. They were all wearing their neckerchiefs up over their faces as masks. I see. Anyone hurt? Well, no, sir. There was only one other passenger riding with me. A nice Easterner going to Pecos. I took everything he had, including a ring he wanted to keep. He was knocked down for trying to keep it. He must have thought a great deal of that ring to risk a bullet. Oh, he did. It was a family ring handed down to him. It had a crest on it and a motto in Latin that said, Sir Wabo feed him. Hmm. Sir Wabo feed him. I will keep faith. Well, that's right. He said it meant that, sir. And he said if he ever got the ring back, he wanted me to have it. Because I warned him to be careful and not talk back to the outlaws. Well, that's nice of him, Dan. Having that motto with you all the time would remind you to keep faith with your own ideals. And with people who put their trust in you. Who is the man? His name is Marvin. He's going to visit in Pecos at the Double Bar Ranch. I see. The outlaws are caught. He'll be needed as a witness. Well, you've had quite an experience. I guess you're about ready for supper. <laughs> yes, sir, I sure am. Good. You and Tonto feed the horses. By that time, I'll have supper ready for us. Then you can tell us more about your trip. It was almost a week later when Dan Reed went to town for a few supplies. 
The old storekeeper was getting up Dan's order. Now, let's see, son. <laughs> you said a slab of bacon, didn't you? That's right. Well, here's a piece that's got a lot of lean in it. Uh, anything else? Did you get that stuff together for me, mister? Sure did. That's it there on the counter. Come to $10.50 and all. Yeah, there's your money. You grab the stuff, Colonel. Yeah, boss. Hey, come on. Let's get out of here. Hey. Sure was a nice big gold ring that hombre had on. Did you notice it, son? <laughs> yes, I did. Well, now what else do you I, want? I, uh, well, I... Uh... I have to go out for a while. I'll come back later for the supplies. Say, wait a minute, son. Hold on. I'll be back. <laughs> Easy, Victor. Steady, boy. <laughs> Tell the outlaws, all right. All right, Victor. We'll trail them and see where they go. Then we'll come back for the sheriff. Come on, Victor. It was almost sundown when Tonto entered the general store in Benton. What can I do for you, Indian? Well, me look for boy. Him come here today. Now, look, Indian. Lots of kids running in and out of here all day long. Reckon it'd take up all my time if I tried to keep track of them all. Oh, him nice-looking boy. Plenty brown, wavy hair. Blue eyes. Wear nice clothes. Him bowed so tall. Say, I'll bet that's the button that run out and left his order here on the counter this afternoon. There it is, right there. Sugar, coffee, bacon, cornmeal. Uh huh. That's what him come to buy. Uh, why him go out? Darn if I rightly know, Injun. You see, two hombres come in to pick up their supplies. As they went out, I see the boy watching them. I says, sure was a nice big gold ring that hombre had on. Did you notice it, son? He says, yes, I did. Then he runs on out after him, saying he'll be back. But he didn't come back. Oh, that's not good. And me take supplies. Here, here, money. Meantime, Dan had followed the two outlaws far into the hills. Finally, they left the main trail and turned down the side of a hill. Dan waited a few minutes, then followed. Soon he reached the edge of a shallow creek, and then he reined up in amazement. Oh, Victor, oh, boy. Golly. Dan was gazing into a small canyon, the floor of which formed the bed of the creek. Sheer rock walls about 15 feet high rose on either side and curved to form a horseshoe at the far end. I know they came this way, Victor. But if they did ride up this creek, there's nothing at the end but that big waterfall. They couldn't go any further. <laughs> They aren't in sight anywhere. Golly, it sure is funny. Looking for somebody, kid? What? Who said that? <laughs> you think it was a ghost? Yeah. Oh. Ooh, ooh, fella. Hey, you're the fresh button was on the stage the other day, ain't you? I remember now. You must have been the third outlaw who was with him. You figure smart, don't you? Look, kid. You weren't so smart to follow a bull out here, though. No? No. They knew they was being followed. I was on watch, and bull signaled me to bring you to the hideout. But but where did they go? Where could... <laughs> Fooled you, didn't they? This is the back way into our cave hideout. They come this way when they want to fool snoopers. There's no way out of this canyon except to go back. Oh, yes, there is. That waterfall makes a perfect curtain over an entrance into our cave. We call it the back way. There's another entrance on the other side of the hill. So that's it. Yes, that's it. I can tell you because it won't matter. You won't ever tell anyone. <laughs> now start riding up the creek and head right through the middle of that waterfall. Get going. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> You're going into that cave, Button. But if I know bull, you have much chance of ever coming out of it alive. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. Under threat of the gun in the outlaw's hand, Dan headed Victor up the shallow creek toward the waterfall at the end of the canyon. They rode through the waterfall and reined up. Holy cow, boy, hold. Oh, there, boy. Steady up. Well, I'll be. It's the kid we saw on the stage a few days ago. Yeah, the young Maverick followed you and Curly all the way from Benton, boss. You'd be sorry he did. Get on that horse, kid. I'm not afraid of you. None of your back talk, huh? Right? Yes, just a kid. Just leave him to me. I'll see you don't get away. I, I, we can use him to take care of the horses and things like that around here. It ain't safe, boss. You better not let him do shut that. Shut up, you, or I'll shut you up for good. I'll get out of here pronto. I'll let you no have it. No need to get tough, Curly. Hey, listen here, Curly. Why the sudden interest in this young coyote? Well, I had a kid like him once. Before the ranchers drove us nesters out of Pico's Valley. And my kid... Well, he got in the way of a rancher's bullet. Then I turned out law. I, I can't stand seeing anyone pick on a kid, Bull. Remember that. Otherwise, I'm with you in anything you do. Thanks, mister. Uh... Now go ahead. Pamper the little sneak. But keep him out of my way. And make sure he don't get away, Curly. I'll hold you responsible for that. Meantime, after learning from Tonto that Dan had taken it upon himself to follow the outlaws, the Lone Ranger left camp with his Indian companion in hopes of cutting sign on Dan and the men he was following. They hunted all night without success. And it was after dawn the next morning when they returned to their camp to get some food. As they sat over their breakfast, Tonto spoke. When you not eat, Kimasabi. That's not good. I'm really worried about Dan, Tonto. Uh, we find Dan somehow, and we make outlaws sorry if them hurt him. I'm sure they're holding Dan, Tonto. If they do hurt him, I'll make them wish they'd never been born. There must be some way to track them down. We've got to do it soon. No, not right. We'll ride back to town and try again to pick up their trail. I'll circle around the outskirts of the town. You try to find out what you can at the store. Well, storekeeper, not remember what men look like that Dan follow. I know. He couldn't tell you anything last night. But he may recall some detail this morning. Or perhaps one of them will return for more supplies and he'd recognize him. Oh. Uh, me go to store. Maybe find out something. Or you try find trail of Dan outlaws. We leave right now. Here's a look. Here, Scout. Here, Father. The big fellow. We'll find them one way or another. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Back at the outlaw's cave, Dan had been trying to think of some plan by which he could get in touch with the Lone Ranger. The night before, while Curly was tying him up for the night, Dan suddenly started to cough. All through the night, he coughed intermittently, much to the annoyance of Curly and others. Say, listen, kid, that coughing of yours sounds bad. What's more, it gets on everybody's nerves, and that ain't so good. But sometimes uh, there are things you can't help. If I had some of my cough medicine here, I could stop it right... <coughs> well, uh, <coughs> what kind of stuff is it, kid? It has a funny name. It could be an Indian name. I guess it's something the Indians make. But it sure would make me stop coughing. Well, do you know the name of the medicine? Yeah, I think so. Maybe if I wrote it down, you could bring some back with you from Benton. Now, look, Button. You don't think for one minute I'd hand somebody a note in your hand, right? Maybe you're trying to pull a trick, huh? If I can think of the name of it, you can write it down. Or even just remember it. Well, I guess that'd be all right. Uh, what's the name of the stuff? Sir Wabo Feedem. Uh, ah, huh. what's that? Sir Wabo Feedem. Uh, funny name, isn't it? Yeah, I. Why, well, I'd better write that down. I'll never remember it. I, well, here's a pencil stub I carry in my pocket. Yeah, but I need a bit of paper. Uh, I have a piece of that, too. I had a list of supplies written down on it when I saw you in the store yesterday. Well, I'll tear a bit off the bottom of that. And... There. Now. How do you spell that Indian cough medicine, kid? Let's see. S E 
R. Oh, wait, wait a minute now. E. R. V. A. B. O. L. B. O. O. That's one word. Then the other one is F. F. I. I. D. E. M. Wait, D. E. E. M. M. Yeah. Show it to the storekeeper. He ought to know what to do about it. Well, all right, but now bring some of it if he has it. Hey, I, I, you watch your step while I'm gone, though. Yes, sir. You see, some of these hombres think I'm soft for sticking up for you. So you have to be careful, huh? Well, I'll see you later, Daniel. Adios. Later in the general store in Benton, Curly handed the slip of paper upon which he had written the words Dan gave him to the storekeeper. Uh, I, 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 by the way, mister, do you have this cough medicine here? Uh, sir, Vabel... Uh, Fidem. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's something I never heard of before. What kind of strange mumbo-jumbo is this, anyway? Well, my friend who wants that cough medicine says it's Indian. Well, maybe it is that. You can't prove it by me. <laughs> Tell you what. How long are you going to be around town? Well, I, I, long enough to get a couple of drinks, I reckon. I'll leave this here. A few Indians come in here every day. I'll ask some of them about this. Maybe I can get it for you. All right, I'd sure like to get it. You see, my friend has a pretty bad cough. I, I'll be back later then. It was almost noon when Tonto rode in fast to join the Lone Ranger at the edge of town. Oh, Scott, oh, fella. Oh, fella. You have news, oh, Tonto? Ah, that's right. Storekeeper say man come there with name of cough medicine. Cough medicine? Ah, that's what fella think. Words on paper say like this. Here, let me write them down. So I will both feed them. Tonto, that's the motto in the ring those outlaws told. That's right. That was a trick of Dan's to let us know the man is one of the outlaws. The man who wanted the medicine still in town. Ah, uh, him there. Is that a big fella? It's uh, time for us to move. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. A short time later, Curly rode into the cave through the front entrance and approached the place where Dan was working under the watchful eyes of Bull and Tex. Oh, there. Oh, oh boy. <clears throat> Well, Harvey Button, I, I, um, I didn't have any luck getting that Indian cough medicine you asked me to get. I showed that name you gave me to the storekeeper, but he didn't know anything about it. What are you talking about, Curly? This kid hasn't got any cough. He hasn't coughed all day. Bull and me's been right here with him. That's right. Hey, Bull, the man's been in a big white stallion looking around outside the waterfall. Somebody got wise, Bull. I'll go pump some lead at that masked hombre. He won't know what hit him. No, you fool. Let him snoop. You won't guess about the entrance behind the waterfall if we let him be. Hey! Stop that kid! In here behind the falls! Help! Help! Shut up, that dirty little maverick! Help! I'll crack your skull with this gun, but... No, you won't, guys! Bull! Jim, help me! Curly's gone loco! He's coming in. Curly, forget that kid. I'll make Tex forget him. All right, get behind me, Button. I'm on the kid's side. Gun him down, the masked man! Curly shot me. I'll turn oh. him and the kid, too. Oh, you won't. Oh, my leg. Oh, oh. Somebody came in the other way. Otto, you heard the shooting. Dan, are you all right? Yes, sir. I'll help Tonto with the rest. Otto, back here. We, we give up. We, we give up. Oh, 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 oh. We, we catch him by surprise, Kimasabi. Yes. Now, all of you line up. We're taking your gun. Drop them. You there. Get over with the others. Oh, wait, please, sir. This is Curly. He saved my life and fought on our side. I appreciate that, Curly. And that fact will be taken into consideration when you and the others go on trial. All right, Toto. We'll take these outlaws to town and turn them over to the sheriff. The last day of the outlaw's trial, Dan left the courtroom and went outside to wait for the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Sometime later, the masked man and his Indian companion approached the hitch rack where Dan waited. Two men were with them. Mr. Marvin and Curly. Yes, Dan. They both want to say goodbye to you. That's right, Dan. 
I came over from Pecos to testify. Now that it's over, I'm riding back. But, but Curly, he... Well, what I well is... Button, uh, thanks to you and your friends there, Judge put me on probation for two years in custody of Mr. Marvin here. Golly, I I'm glad you don't have to go to jail. Ah, oh, so am I. You, you see, back there in Pecos County, I thought the world was against me because of those ranchers. But now I know that if an hombre plays the game square... He'll come out on top sooner or later. You've learned your lesson well, Curly. Then, Mr. Marvin has something to give you. Yes, Daniel. I, I told you on the stage, if I ever got that crested ring back, I was going to give it to you. Here it is. Oh, oh golly. It, it was the motto on this ring that brought my friends to the outlaw's cave. So why both feet are... Uh, you, you sure pulled the wool over my eyes when you had me ask for cough medicine by that name button. Now, oh, what's the words really mean? They're Latin words meaning, I will keep faith. Well, I'll remember that. Well, I guess we have to hit the trail now for Pecos. I'll be going back home, sort of. Well, adios, button. I won't forget you. Wait, Curly. Here's something to help you remember. Steady, boy. Yeah. <coughs> we'll see you again. Easy, big fella. Easy. Good luck, Curly. Thank you. Adios. Come on, Victor. Come on, Victor. Say, what was it Dan gave you, Curly? Something that set me thinking, Mr. Marvin. A silver bullet. A silver bullet? Yeah, but uh, uh, we've been wondering who that bass man is all this time. Uh, and nobody seemed to know. But I saw him hand Dan this silver bullet. That means our mass friend is a lone ranger. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated. 